guys. I am working on this big circle painting today. I have had these circle panels in my closet for months now, and I've been really wanting to work on them. I really enjoy mixing things up by working in a different shape or aspect ratio than I usually do. I find that that gives me a lot of, so I know it's a little early, <laughs> but I think this is a sentiment that a lot of us feel is that I just can't wait for it to be fall time again, for it to be cooler, for everything that comes with fall. That's the time that I find that I have the most inspiration from the outside world for my artwork. And I've been feeling really uninspired for a while now. So I'm looking forward to that, that dose of, of excitement and ideas that usually come around that season that will be very, very welcomed. And once July rolled away and we're into August, it just feels like it's so close. I, I usually start feeling that fall time feeling when September comes. So we really only have one month left before, before I'm ready to start thinking about fall, thinking about the things that come from it and starting to try to bring that into my artwork more. But, but anyways, this piece... It's kind of a, a bridge between that. I wanted to do something that felt like Halloween time, like maybe Halloween night, but wasn't too on the nose or too into a fall specific aesthetic. And mostly I did that by the colors that I ended up choosing and how I picked them out. So that way the subject matter could still be really rooted in the things that I find very inspiring. So when I first started working on this, I knew that I wanted it to be a print, which by the way, it is. She's available at my shop. There is a link down in the description if you'd like to check it out. It's actually titled Chill Air, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that, but so in the end, I decided that I wanted to create a painting that was a circle, but that would allow me to then enlarge the background to fill out a normal rectangle dimension that I normally do my prints in. So she's available as an eight by 10 and an 11 by 14. So I knew from the beginning that there were going to be certain design constraints that I had to live by, which I liked actually. It, it forced me to work not in my first automatic thought process for this. So very frequently I like to break the edge of the canvas with things like hair and then they come back in and direct the eye around the piece. But because I wanted to be able to have almost like a, a vignette, the character within a space, a solid color that I could then spread out to fill out that shape, the print shape, I needed to contain all of her hair. That way it was contained. But let's talk a bit about my love of gouache. I talk about it all the time now because I feel like I've just completely unlocked this this exciting new secret for my artwork that I am in love with, but I really love it. It just felt like once I started figuring out how to incorporate it better with my work, like it was this missing puzzle piece that I'd been looking for for years since I almost at the beginning of my watercolor journey. There were just things that watercolors weren't quite doing for me that I was struggling with or that it just wasn't capable of. And when I first tried gouache, it uh, I wasn't handling it well because I just I hadn't practiced with it enough, I guess. But but it didn't solve the problem the first time I tried it, so I had set it aside and moved on. And now that I've done it again and I've used it enough to at least practice it enough to understand it, I'm just so happy with the process. I find that uh, there are a lot of things that I struggled with with watercolors before that now it's just it's not an issue. It's really pleasant to work with. It's unlocked a lot of things. One of the things is that I find that the gouache that I use, it, uh, it handles dark colors a lot better. Even when I wash it down so that it's very similar to watercolor, it's basically a wash like in watercolor, it still holds itself better. It, it creates a darker wash and it doesn't... I don't know. It's hard to describe exactly what watercolors look like in person when you go really, really dark or you try to get it really dark. The pigment just has a certain weird sheen to it sometimes, or it just looks kind of gritty and grimy and not like a, a clean wash. It's just, it's not 
it's not what I want it to look like. So I have tried ink wash before and I think ink washes would really work well for the solution, but because I'm working in the gouache ecosystem now, this is what I'm using, but works really well. It allows me to get a really consistent, very dark wash down and I can build up more and more opaque shadows that all have the same light reflective quality to it so that it just, it melds really well together, but I can create really, really dark shadows on dark shapes like the clothing that she's wearing. And that is something that I had really fought with with watercolors before if I wanted to paint like a black dress, those shadows would always have this like chalky quality to it. And I could never get the full value of the dress down low enough to where I wanted. And with the gouache, it just unlocks so much more potential for things to be a lot darker and richer in color. And I absolutely love that. I'm so happy with having that, that dimension unlocked again for me to use. And the original painting of Chill Air is available. And like I mentioned, she's just ready to go right up on the wall, which I love. I love being able to create a painting that's just ready to go. But, but yes, Chill Air is available. There's a link down in the description. If you'd like to give her a new home, then make sure to check that out. And uh, she is, like I said, available as a print as well, an 8x10 or an 11x14 print size. And that is also linked down below. It also allows me to work a little bit smarter with certain elements like with the bones in this painting. I love being able to go back in and add lighter details and not having to preserve them in the watercolors. I find that it allows me to create a much smoother wash behind it. So like her skin, if I had to paint around those bones, be very precise to not paint on top of them to preserve that whiteness of the paper for the bones. It just would have taken significantly longer and there would have been areas that I wouldn't have been happy with because it would have been messier to create that wash. So being able to just wash right over her skin and to know that I'll be able to go back in and add that, that white element on top with gouache was just so much more of a smooth process for me. It, it lets me be able to be in the moment a little bit more rather than getting caught up in, in finicky little details that aren't enjoyable to work on. So I get to leave the bones for the next step whenever I can get to that. And then when I do, the bones get to be actually painted rather than just recessed. There's just so many elements like that that I found that, uh, that I by far prefer to add actively rather than passively preserving. So things like rim lighting, I can add in now. And I love doing that. I'd like to do it more. I haven't really embraced that as much as I'd like, but, but yeah, there are just so many lighter elements or really, I mean, any value, any color, there are elements that are just much easier to paint in than, than to omit it or to, to have to carefully paint around it and then paint it. And anyways, there's just a lot of, a lot more options on um, how to deal with different elements within a piece, different details. And I took a big leap with this one. I painted the background all in gouache. I don't think I've ever painted that much surface area with just gouache before. And I absolutely loved that process. It was so much more pleasant than had I tried to paint the background with watercolors. With watercolors for painting the background like that, it would have meant that I had to work much quicker than I would have been comfortable with because I would need to spread out the wash quick enough that it wouldn't dry in certain areas and then have weird lines where it did dry. If you've done large washes on really complicated areas like that, you'll know what I mean, where you just feel like you're fighting the clock. You have to really quickly spread from one area to another to make sure that every edge of where you're painting is progressing forward quick enough so that it's remains wet and it's very difficult to get anything close to a flat wash. So I very often embrace the texture of the watercolors like I talked about before, which I like, but sometimes I just want it to be really, really smooth. So when I painted the background in gouache, it did allow me to get it very, very smooth. 
I was able to take my time and just spread it out nice and smooth. And I loved that. It was it was a dream compared to the, the frantic stress that I normally feel when I'm painting a really large area like that. Uh, the big potential downside, the thing that I was most nervous about was that I would not mix enough paint for the area because I was mixing several gouache colors together to get the color that I wanted. If I had to remix, there was no way it was gonna be exact. So that was my big fear which meant that I was also afraid that I would way over mix and then end up wasting a bunch of gouache, which is also very frustrating. I hate wasting art supplies, but I decided to go ahead and do it and bite off this challenge. And I was actually really pretty close with the amount that I mixed for the background. I was so relieved. That's a skill that I've been trying to hone since I've started with my oil painting journey, trying to figure out how much paint do I actually need to mix to cover what I'm painting. And it was really, really close. So I was very relieved. And it was a bit on the extra side, which is what I want. I want to have a little, a little bit, a decent amount extra so that I don't feel like I'm being precious with the paint the farther I go and that I can fully cover what I'm looking to cover. And uh, yeah, it worked out all right, which was a huge relief. But yeah, that, that, painting process of the background was just really pleasant. It was a dream compared to what I would have expected if I was doing this all in watercolors. Thank you guys so much for watching and chatting and hanging out with me while I worked on this piece. I wanted this one to be very, very me. I've been struggling with that a little bit lately and I, I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed the process. So I feel like in that regard, it was a success and I actually really love how she turned out. I love this character. And again, she's available as a print or an original painting. And that is linked down in the description if you'd like to go check that out. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.